everyone how you all doing welcome back to my channel my name is Bodies. how you all doing in today's class we'll be learning how to make a v-neck short dress with a mandarin collar and a puff sleeve so here i have two yards of fabric and i will be managing it to make my dresses it's, it is a short dress so if today is your first time of checking out my channel, you're welcome. Please make sure you subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram, Blakey Signatures, and on Facebook, Sewing Innovation. For our online classes and sewing tools, just use the number in the description box to get to us. Also, our physical class at Ojodu Bega, Lagos. Yeah, we are starting a new batch on the 4th of March. Get in touch with us with the number in the station box below. Now let's get started. So here now I've just folded my fabric into four because I want to be cutting both the front and the back together. So having folded into four, the next thing is to determine the length of your dress. It is a short dress. So I want about 36, 37. So this is the starting point. So here I have 37 inches. So if I want it to be 37, so the remaining one could be the um same allowance the next thing you need to impute is half of your hand hole measurements i'm using nine and a quarter then the waist which is 17 the e which is 25 and a half and the m of the dress the first thing you are going to do is the three inches eight inches standard three inches eight inches okay so from that point, I'm just going to come down by three quarter of uh, one inch. So after doing that, the next thing I will do is to impute my half of my shoulder measurement. Half of my shoulder measurement is eight and a half, but I'll be making use of nine inches here. You can make it a fitted dress, but you can still make it loose and free. So nine inches is here. Then make it straight line. Good. So after doing that, the next thing I will do is to form my hand hole measurements. Then that is by adding the bust measurement. So my bust measurement is 46. So when you divide that by two, that should be 20, 23, yes. So you divide that 23 into four. But I really want it to be a bit loose. So I'm just going to make, so I have 11 and a half, but let me just, instead of the 46, let me just make it uh, 48, which will be 24, that's 12. So I'll just make it 12 and a half. However you want it, how loose you want it to be. So this is 12 and a half. Then one inch for the sizing allowance. Good. The next thing is to get the midpoint of this place, okay. Then you come in by three quarter of an inch for the front ham hole. you've watched my video you will be familiar with all this okay yeah. so that's for the front arm move then the back will just come straight to the midpoint so that is it so the next thing we are going to do now is to go to the hip line so this is the width the hip so for the hip it's also 48 well, i'll just round it up to 50 which yeah and quarter of that is 12 and a half so i use 12 and a half here so let me just make use of 13 inches here okay how free you want it depends on your preference the one in size allowance next connected from the boss to the hip so I'm just going to come in by 
let's say three quarter of an inch or one inch. And you can even do more. And there's someone that has a flat tummy, you can do more up to one and a half or just use quarter of your waist measurement at that point. And that's what I have. So here now, I'm just going to make it straight. But if you want to have a curve there, all you have to do is to go up by one and a half to two inches, and then you make a slight curve at that point. You want to have something like this. So you can see that if you want to so just make a slight curve. It depends on your preference. Now I'm going to the neckline. All I'm going to do now is for the front, first the width, I will make it three and quarter. Three and quarter. And the depth for the front, I will make it also three and quarter. So that's for the front. So if you're a medium sized person, three inches is fine. Then for the back, I'll maintain the three quarter and then here I'll make it one inch. So now after doing that, we are good to go. So we are just going to add half an inch to the size similar once all of that has been added. Now for the deep V, we are going to do that after removing the back. So I'm just going to do half an inch inward. Between half an inch to three quarter, it depends on how wide you want it to be. So I'm just going to make it half an inch. Half an inch is fine here. And the depth of the V depends on your preference. So I think with four inches or four and a half, it is just okay but it depends on what you want actually so i'm just going to make it four inches so that is it and then you connect straight down so here now it depends if you want the Slanted one, all well and good. If not, okay, maybe I should go for that. So I'm having because of this two more rounds. So now for the neckline, you are going to cut the back first. Forget the seam allowance for the shoulder, and then I'm going to cut the back ham bow first. So I've cut it all out, only the back ham bow. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to notch it at the waist. The fabric I'm working with is satin so it's just moving here and there so you need, you need to be careful so after notching those points i will have to remove one piece which will now be for the back so this is what it looks like you can see just a simple dress then let's fold back the front So I haven't folded back the front, so the next thing is to cut the neckline and then the ham hole. Remember we want the V, so you can either cut the V or you, okay, let's just cut it so it won't confuse you. There are different ways you can do that. Home. 
So what you are going to do now is to now place this on the folded fabric to cut out the facing. Let me show you. So this is what we're going to have. You can have yours wider than this, but because I'm still going to take half inch seam allowance, that's why I just left it this way. So you can still go deeper if you want. So right now, let's cut the sleeve. Here for the sleeve, all I did is to fold my fabric also into four. And now, what is the difference? My sleeve has been drafted on it. If you don't know how to draft your basic sleeve, I'll put it in the description box below. So now, since I want my sleeve to be three-quarter sleeve, you can have it full. My three-quarter sleeve is 17 inches. But because of the puffiness, I just added extra, so I made it 20 two and a half because of the same allowance half inch at the upper part one inch at the lower part and once you've done that if, you, if yours is full just use your full uh, long sleeve and then add about four inches to that so having done that at the hem here all i did is to double my wrist circumference my wrist uh, sleeve opening is nine inches times two that's 18 which is what i have at the lower part here now, from here now, I'll just measure what I have, 17 and a half. I'll come down here, 17 and a half, here, and then just make a slight curve down here. And that is it. Then you have your layered sleeve. Okay, so I'm just going to cut out the sleeve. And this is what it looks like. This is what we want to have. Okay, so we are done with the sleeve and the shirt. So now let us cut the fabric. So just fold a fabric underneath and pin it down. And then you're just going to cut off the V-neck. And then just a little of this very curved neckline. We don't really need it, but we need to finish up this v -neck. That's why we just need little. So here I just cut up to this point. Okay. So, and that is it. Now, let us finish it up. Okay, can you see? So, I just did to somewhere around here. So, this stops here, the V stops here. So, you can just add about three and a half or, or four because of the hemming allowance. So, here, so I had half and then you just connect. So, that is it. is ready so the first thing we are going to do before we join the neckline is this I'm going to place this on it so right side facing each other so can you see what I have Good. so you can see I only stopped somewhere around here so first you need to overlock the raw edges or just folding little then just taking half an inch half an inch turn it and then give it a good press with your aiming glue after that the next thing is to join the front and the back by the shoulder then we can take the measurement for the mandarin collar join the shoulder and then i finish up this deep v i'm going to show you how it looks like so looking at it on the wrong side, this is what it looks like. So you can see that. So what I did was to place it on the right side. So it was placed on the right side and then I sew in half an inch, then trim it off to like quarter of an inch. Okay. So after sewing it on the right side, then I have to bring it onto the wrong side and give it a good prep. So the next thing I will do now is to use Emming glue. I don't know if you know what Emming glue looks like. This is what Emming glue looks like. So I'm going to use it to iron it. Then it stays because I want it to really stay because of the neck, um, the mandarin collar we are fixing to it. Okay. So having done this now, the next thing is to get the collar ready. So this is what the collar looks like. Okay. So how do I drop this? I'm going to show you. So the first thing you need to do is this. Pick up the front here, match it up, 
match up the sh uh, shoulder seam here too and then you are just going to measure you can measure all at once or you just measure the back first then the uh, front so here for the back i have three and three quarter then from that point too i'm going to measure to the front make sure you measure it accurately good so here i have five and quarter so the back is three and three quarter the back is quarter so now let me quickly show you how to draft that to get started the back is three and three quarter the front is five and quarter so just make a straight line this way this will be the center back and then the front, center front the center front is open so for the center back now i'm going to mark three and three quarter which is here and then for the front five and quarter so at this point now i'm going to come out by come up by half an inch or three quarter inch so if you do three quarter inch it will be closer more be choking to your neck so it depends on your preference so i'll do three quarter which is here the next thing is to now connect with your hand hook curve or your hip curve whichever one you have so i'll place it this way okay let me just find this so can you see what we have then you can note the point at which you uh connect so it will be easier for you for the upper part so having done that my stamp color will just be one inch so from this point i'll come up by one so at this back region one here to one this part is going to be straight So I made the cover as 29. That's what I'll be using here. So that is it. Then you can just make it stylish or you can just have your square neck if you want it. So something like this is fine. That is all. This part will be on fold. So you just have to cut it and then add half an inch seam allowance on the lower part. Looking at this, half an inch at the upper part and lower part. And then you cut out two pieces. So this is what it looks like. Make sure you take your measurement very well. Okay. The next thing I'm going to now do is to place it on each other. Right side facing each other. Then I'm going to fold with half an inch upward. Then I'm going to sew in half an inch, half an inch, all down, and then turn it with my pressing higher. I've sewn the collar, so this is what it looks like. So on the wrong side, all I did is to sew the half an inch, trim it off, and notch it. That is very, very important. Then give it a good press. So this is what I have. Now look at what I'm going to do now. This one folded in is going to be finished on the outside. So this is how you are going to place it now this is the right side of the fabric this is the center back so all i'll do now is the center back has to match the center back so you pin it at that point okay so you're now going to sew up half an inch all around everything has to match if your measurement is being taken very well so you can see you can see so you're just going to sew it round so after sewing it round, then you can now close it up to finish it on the outside. Guys, you can see what I've done. I've joined it. I've sewn it. So on the inside, this is what it looks like. So now on the outside, don't forget to notch. I'm now going to finish it up this way. Gently. So you can pin it all around. Starting from the center back to. So that's how I'm going to finish the collar all around then i'm going to fix in the sleeve and then sew it all down and then fix the elastic shirt dress is finally ready and you can see how beautiful it is you can see how lovely everything looks like the sewing the ironing 
it's very important this is what the sleeve now looks like after elastic so before adding the elastic this is what it looks like so just hem it in and then leave a space to pass in your elastic so how do you get your elastic just do something like this since it's three quarter then whatever you have you can cut it off then pass through a needle to now put it in and have something like this so i'm just going to finish having the elastic and then show you the final look and see how beautiful it is guys this is the shirt dress we've just made and you can see how beautiful it is you can see the deep v neatly sewn the collar so perfect you could have it short or high depending on your preference the fabric i make use of is a certain fabric it really enhances and beautifies the dress a lot so just give it a try and then you can follow me on instagram blakey signatures and on facebook sewing innovations for our online classes sewing tools and our physical classes use the number in the description box below i remain your girl blakey and i love you guys so much